Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'll be going over this multi-camera filter effect uh, with the ability to tap to change so that you can have more than one filter on your screen at one time. Uh, basically it's the same image projected across four screens, I've separated them into four quadrants and then I've divided them up with this currently white border that you can change that to anything you like. Uh, this allows you to have more than one effect on the screen at once. As you can see I currently have the duotone, the tritone, the luminance patch and this color cycles patch here, all working at the same time uh, through the patch editor and these uh, assets and materials down here. It might look a little complicated, but it's not. I've already covered all three of these uh, in some previous videos that'll be linked above or in the description. And there's probably gonna be a video about this coming soon. If not, it's a relatively simple patch and I'll explain it as we go along. So with that being said, I'm gonna pause this and we'll get started. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment, let me know what you thought of this video, any suggestions for what you wanna see in future videos. And yeah, uh, let's create a new project. Get straight into this. Okay, so let's create a new project and I'll make that full screen, switch over to the FaceTime camera. And here we go, a little bit of a different angle. Um, but yeah, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a rectangle to our scene that will appear here nested inside of a canvas. As you can see, it's right in the top left of our screen right now. We're gonna duplicate that so we have four rectangles and now we're gonna rename them for each quadrant that we're gonna have them in. So we're gonna name the top left, the top right, the bottom left and the bottom right. I'm just gonna abbreviate for time. I'm gonna name them TL for top left, TR for top right bottom left and bottom right. And then we're gonna make them full screen. So we're gonna drag and click, click and drag all of them. Uh, and we're gonna come over to size and make them fill the height and fill the width. So now we know the full size of our display. We wanna take these values now and half them all. So we're gonna go from 375 to 187.5. That splits this in half. And from 667 to 333.5. And now we have our four quadrants but they're all right now sat in the top left of the screen so if we come under the top right one then we can now position it with the alignment tool we can position it over here onto the other side do the same with the bottom left so if we take that and we move it down then now that's in the bottom left and the same for this one so we bring it down and then we'll drag it to the right and now we have all four of our quadrants covering the screen Okay, so now we can add materials for each of these. So for our top left, we'll add a material and we'll call that TL as well. Top right, we can add a material here, TR. Bottom left and bottom right. And as you can see, as I'm creating these materials, they're graying out the checkerboard pattern, bottom right. And now if we control select all of these, we can change the shader type to flat and we'll create this completely flat, white, neutral, uh, background that we can work with. So now if we come up here to the camera in our scene, we can hit texture extraction that will extract this camera texture and make it uh, an asset down here in our assets panel. We control select these four materials again and under the textures panel we want to add our camera texture and now as you can see we have all four of our quadrants with camera textures projected onto them. So now I'm getting real time views of what the camera is seeing. Okay, so this is a pretty sweet effect all by itself. You have the four quadrants with the cameras. You can come in here under the diffuse settings of the shader properties and you can change the color of each one individually. So you could come in and change this one to yellow, this one to a slightly different between yellow and green, more of a red down here and a blue. You could leave it like this and you could pretty much call it done. That's a nice filter, the colors are nice. It's kind of a cool effect, but if I undo this, uh, I'll show you a little bit more interactivity you can do with the patch editor, how to create a nice border, and just some other things that you can do to spice it up, give it some more opportunities for unique qualities that, you know, just make things uh, a little bit more fun for the end user. So we have all of these rectangles here, our top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. What we're gonna do is duplicate each one separately. So we now have our top left, and I'm gonna rename that top left patch. So this is now at the top left uh, quadrant, the rectangle that we have here with all the exact same settings. As you can see, it's shrunk down, it's uh, right here and it has the current material layer top left. Uh, but if I duplicate each one of these, then we can now have a layer on top of each of the ones that we've already created and we can edit those inside of the patch editor to have some cool effects. Uh, so we'll do a duplicate of this one as well bottom right and we have now 
Oh, I like things to all look the same. Yeah, so now we have our top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right, and we have a duplicate of each one with a uh, one which we've renamed patch. Now we can come into each one of these and change the material. So instead of top left for this one, we're going to create a new material. We're going to call it top left patch, and we can. Uh, what we can do actually is just duplicate this one and rename it top right patch bottom left patch and bottom right patch down here just to save some time and then we can come up here to top right patch and those are already set up so all you have to do is change them in that settings panel it's just a little bit quicker than creating individual ones you have to click a few less buttons which is always handy uh, so yep we've got all of those set up now and as you can see it's completely grayed out our background again Okay, so now we have all of our material layers for our new rectangles. Uh, we can control select all four of these for our patch materials. Change the shader type to flat, same as we had with the other one, so that we get this completely white background. And now what we're going to do is hit view and show the patch editor. So we've got that in our scene now, we've got that just here. And then we're going to hit library to open up the AR library. And we're going to hit patch assets to see this menu, shaders come in here and we're going to be using for this filter effect we're going to be using the duotone so we'll import that one import into my untitled project uh, the tritone we're going to use that one as well so we'll import that uh, what else the luminance one we'll import that and the color cycles patch which you have to search for because I don't remember where it is <laughs> uh, color cycle so we'll import that as well Okay, so once that's done, we'll hit done, get rid of that menu, and as you can see down here now in our assets panel, which is getting kind of full, we have this patch folder with these four patches in. So we can drag those and drop them inside of our patch editor. We've got our duotone, our tritone, just get them all nicely lined up with each other. We've got a luminance one here, we'll drag that in as well. And with the luminance one, you also want to connect that up to a pack, so make sure that you do that in advance. And you want to make sure the vector on your pack is four and you want to connect all three of these top ones from the luminance file from the luminance patch to the pack so it looks like this and change this number to one uh, just so that you remember for later uh, and with the color cycle we'll drag that one in as well nice so now we have all four of these patches set up in the most basic way you can obviously make adjustments to them yourself but that's pretty much the entire thing we're now going to also drag this camera texture in so we have that here and all four of these will be connected up. So we'll take the RGBA value of our camera texture, connect that up to the duotone shader. We're gonna take the RGBA value of our camera texture, connect it to the texture of our tritone shader. We'll drag it down a bit, give ourselves some, some room. Then we're gonna take this RGB value on the camera texture. We'll drag that in here to the luminance. So we'll connect that up there. And the color cycle here we don't actually have to connect that up to anything so we'll just leave that as as it is now we can come up to our tl patch here and have our diffuse texture visible in the scene so if we now drag that up and put it over here so now i can connect this duotone shader patch to this top left diffuse texture and as you can see it's already working we have this blue and purple duotone effect up here in the top left and now if i take these other three patches uh these materials sorry and highlight them we can do the same thing we can import these textures as patches i'll zoom out a little and we take this bottom right one and move it down to here this bottom left one and move it down to uh, the luminance and the top right one we'll put next to this tritone and then all you do is connect them up and as you can see now we have this effect enabled the tritone effect in the top right the luminance effect in the bottom left which is looking nice black and white and we can connect this color cycle one here to the bottom right patch and as you can see, it's moving a bit mad right now. So I'm going to increase that from one second, the duration to 15 seconds, which is the full time for one story on Instagram. Uh, I'm also going to select random start so that every time you restart the filter, it's random. Uh, the color that it starts from and cycles through. Uh, and then I'm going to reduce the opacity on this to 50% because otherwise you won't be able to see the camera texture behind. I'm actually going to reduce the opacity here to 35% and I'm going to do the same for the top left and the top right. So I'm going to reduce those to 35 as well, just because I think it gives it a nicer look. It helps uh, with visibility. 
I'm not going to do it for the bottom left one, which is the luminance patch. I'm actually going to increase that to 100% because having it any lower actually reduces the effect of the luminance. So I'll leave that one at 100%, but with these other ones, other ones, I like to keep them at around 35. Uh, so yeah, just play around with it until you get an effect that you like, and then we'll go from there. I should also mention that if you found any of my descriptions for these patches a little confusing, then uh, be aware that I have made some other videos covering these in more detail. Uh, there's probably a link in the description or in the top right of the screen. Sometimes there's a drop down menu. I'll try and include that if I remember. But yeah, if I've gone over these a little bit fast and you want to know more about these individual patches, the duotone one, the tritone one, and the luminance one, then I have got videos. So feel free to check those out, like comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how to add tap to change features just because that's what I had at the start. So we're gonna double click on the patch editor, add a screen tap, and then we're gonna move that and connect it from this tap. We're gonna add a counter. So we've got a counter now. And um, we're going to add an equals exactly. Oh, not an equals, but an equals exactly. So we'll have that coming out. We'll copy that and paste it. So now we have two of them. Um, we'll leave this first one set as zero and we'll change the second one to one. And this maximum count here will change to two because we now have two equals exactly's. Uh, and now what we're going to do is come up here to our top left patch and all of these rectangle patches that we have. We're going to highlight those. Um, we're going to click the visibility tab here in properties menu so now we have all of those we can move them over and um, for this second section we're just going to leave them down here in the second equals exactly doesn't really matter what order just generally connect them up do do and as you can see they're all disappearing right now and we're back to regular so now if we simulate touch when we click here they will come back that's just a simple one i'm showing you how to do that because it was what i had at the beginning now I guess we can also do some instructions. So if we come up here to the project menu and then edit properties, uh, under capabilities, we can add some instructions here. So you hit instructions and then under this, you wanna add custom instructions, check that box, then drop down the menu, click the plus button. We're gonna have tap to change. So we'll just add that. And now that capability is added. So what we're gonna do is come up here to our, where is it? the device yeah custom instructions on opening uh, tap to change and now if we control select all of those we can move them out of the way and they appear in our patch editor the runtime less than which is currently set at five seconds and the device with the instructions tap to change so when we hit refresh now you'll see the tap to change instructions are there at the bottom you can tap and now the filters change uh, so that's all the interaction that we're going to be doing in the patch editor uh, I hope that was okay. I, I've explained some of these techniques before in other videos, so I'd recommend just going back and watching some other ones. It'll all come together eventually. It's kind of like a learning process that you only can really understand by doing it more and more. The next thing and the final thing we're gonna do now is the border. So under canvas up here, we're going to add another rectangle. And we're gonna call that one border top. And I'm going to uh, come here into 2D mode so that I can edit it a little bit better. I'm going to stretch it out all the way across the screen so that it's wider than the screen like this and I'm also going to make it a little bit thinner just like this uh, and now I'm going to duplicate that. We're going to have border bottom and duplicate it one more time border middle okay so now we're going to do the exact same thing so we'll duplicate it down here and we'll call this one border left and now what I'm going to do is reshape this one so I'm going to stretch it out to be as wide as the screen and then I'm going to pull it all the way across oh, and actually just keep moving it until it's as thin as you want it to be. I think about there's pretty good. Maybe like that. And now we'll duplicate this one again. And we'll call that one border left right. And then we'll duplicate that one again. And we'll just have border right. So this one instead of border middle, I'm gonna call it border top down bottom. 
So it's like, yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so now we're gonna come up to each individual rectangle that we've created. And the same way we did with the quadrants, we're gonna just align them. So for border top, we're gonna to align it to the top as it is. For border bottom, we're gonna align it to the bottom. Border mid top bottom, that one's the middle. So we're actually just gonna align that one here to the center. Then you just do it for all of them, for the border left, for the border in the middle, and the border along the right. And now all of them are in the places that they should be. We're gonna highlight them and create a new material. And we're gonna create a new one, which we're just gonna name border. Turn the shader type over to flat. So now you get this flat neutral color. If you tap to change, the effect is still there, but it's masked by this border. You can't see the edges that are sticking out uh, beyond the display, but it has a nice effect. I like it. Uh, you can change the color in here to anything you like. So you can have it be a black one or a red one or orange or just about anything. I like black and white. They're quite nice, especially with the different colored effects that you get uh, and especially for demonstrating it. But of course you can play around with it. You can do anything you like. You may be able to even change the shape and the color, add more cameras, more effects, cameras inside of cameras. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot that you can do here. It's a really interesting uh, concept and yeah, that's pretty much the whole thing. I'm going to zoom out here so that you can see all the patches. Uh, I'll make this a little bit larger. Uh, yeah, that's everything that we've done today. I'll go over it quickly. So we have our camera texture here with three uh, patches, the duotone shader, the tritone shader and the luminance shader with this color cycle here which doesn't need to be connected up. They're all connected to our diffuse textures, which are materials that we've created for the quadrants that we've made up here. So we've separated out our four quadrants. We've projected four cameras uh, that are exactly the same into these four spaces. And then we've added layers on top with individual effects. Uh, we've now added tap to change features on top of that and some instructions so that when you hit reset, uh, your user knows that they can tap and that these effects will uh, activate. Okay, so here we are in the filter itself on my phone, testing it out uh, for the outro. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I know it was rambling a little bit longer than usual, uh, but I'm trying to get more of these videos out. I'm trying to put more time into making them. For some reason, my computer is having some trouble right now recording the screen while I'm using Spark. It's not so bad with Blender or uh, any other program, like if I'm on screen recording Google Chrome, it's fine. But for some reason it has an issue with Spark. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe they'll fix it in an update. Maybe it's something on my end, but I'm working on it. Uh, it just means a little bit more editing, that's all. But yeah, I'm hoping to get a few more of these videos out in the near future. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this one, what you want to see next. Uh, also, I've been live streaming. I don't know if you've seen, uh, if you have the bell notification on and you get like regular notifications and you're subscribed to this channel, then you may know that I've been live streaming a lot recently. I'm playing Minecraft right now. It's pretty fun. I haven't beaten the game yet in survival, but I'm getting there. If anyone wants to check that out, I might try and do another live stream in the next few days uh, and more regularly in the future as well. Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for watching. We're at like 760 subscribers now. Can't believe it genuinely amazing to me uh i hope to see uh all of you soon peace have a nice day